noises because my dog is chewing on um, a toy right now <laughs> so it is in this vlog we're going to be swapping screen time for reading time and how I'm going to be doing this I meant to look before Sunday and I just I didn't I forgot to so what we're doing is the amount of screen time that I had that I had the day before will be how much I try to read today so yesterday it was eight hours and 35 minutes but I do read on the Kindle and Audible on my phone so we are minusing the information and reading tab so I would like to read for seven hours and 16 minutes today which I don't know how possible that is but I already have read like three two or three short stories today or essays and that got me to five minutes and 47 seconds now I do not think I will be able to get to seven hours but this is a challenge so if I don't I just fell today and that's a-okay I'm not gonna that's not something I would beat myself up over oh my, my dog is so warm I am freezing she's been outside so she is warm but I am going to go over my weekly TBR now. So the first book, oh my gosh, the tell. There's the tell in the background. But the first book is my essay collection that I'm reading at the moment. And that is Eve's Hollywood by Eve Babbitts with an introduction by Holly Brubach. And oh, you just knocked down all my books. So this is a modern classic. Basically, um, I've heard it be called a memoir i've heard it be called an essay collection so take it as you will i think it's more of an essay collection personally and i am 10 percent of the way into this and i'm just noticing that like what is that <laughs> i don't know what that is but this is doing a great job at depicting life in los angeles during the mid-century at least for the part where i'm at i don't know when this book was originally published 1972 and then I am going to be starting a new book today and this will be an audio book because it is a play and for plays I think it's just easier and a lot more immersive to read with an audio book because it is a full cast and with classics you can usually find these audio books for free which is obviously awesome who doesn't want a free book and that is Henry V by Shakespeare. I got this at an independent bookstore in a town near me. And if you know the movie, the Netflix movie, The King, that Brad Pitt produced, Timmy Chalamet's in it, Timothy Chalamet, sorry, Lily Rose Depp, and a lot of other people. One of my ancestors is also a character in this, but that movie is based on this play, and that was why I originally decided to pick up these, because I have read other um, Shakespeare histories that are like in the Henrys that are in the War of the Roses. It's called The War of the Roses. Um, I don't know... It was where there was a series or something like that but um so i'm not reading all this introduction stuff because i have read those other plays so i do know and in these editions so i do know all of that so i won't be starting it until all the way right here <laughs> that far into the book but i do like how shakespeare i like his writing so i will be starting this in at two o'clock it's currently 152 and then I will be starting a new mood read today because over the weekend I just, I binge read. I probably could have had the, hit those seven hours. I read like over 800, no, like 450 pages this weekend. I think it was 455 was how much I read. 
I finished two books and honestly, I, some people binge watch TV. I binge read that or that's personally what I have been doing like every other weekend this week. This time it's been two weekends in a row because I didn't travel anywhere this weekend. But the next one is The Lost Ticket by Freya Sampson. This is um, strangers on a London bus unite to help an elderly man find his missed love connection in the heartwarming new novel from the acclaimed author of The Last Chance Library. But this description sounds so emotional because as I was saying, there was an old man and he met a woman on the bus in 1962. He lost the napkin or bus ticket that had her number on it. Um, so he can never call her about the date they were going to go on. So all these people are trying to find that woman so they, so the man and the woman can see each other for like one last time because he does have dementia and it's progressing quickly. And I'm like, that sounds so emotional. And my friend, he already read this. So he's like, I'm going to be skimming it through um, while I read that. And then my ebook is A Breath of Snow and Ashes by Diana Gabaldon. This is following an American family, indie days, years, or whatever, leading up to the American Revolution. And this is the sixth book in the Outlander series. So again, we will start reading in six minutes here. Delilah and I will head back out. I need to go get a hoodie because it's kind of chilly here. We had a storm or a rainstorm yesterday. And <laughs> Why do they put this stuff in dog toys and salt and slime eat you? <laughs> but yeah, there is my update and I will talk to y'all later. I do need to film a video today. Um, I'm filming a haul and I'm doing something different with like TikTok that I've never done before. So I'm kind of nervous about that, but it should be a lot of fun. I'm wearing makeup and I'm dressed cute. Now, every time I wear this sweater, I'm like, I look so cute. And it's not even really in my color palette, but it's a favorite. And I usually don't like towel necks because they usually is like it, it doesn't suit my face shape, but I think this one is at a good, and, and it's not even folded down. So I like this turtleneck, like it's from Cider. And oh my gosh, my arm keeps cramping up. And I know oh, like what triggered it earlier is because I was holding a microphone for a really long time. So like how does singers do it? <laughs> um, and I don't, so yeah, that's really annoying. But that's again, we are, Staying hydrated, I don't know how that's how much I've had today, which is just like the biggest water bottle I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, <laughs> I'm usually just a deer park, which I know deer parks not everywhere has different names in different regions. I'm usually that kind of girly, but we ran out of those. And my dad has he we drink different water bottles, I don't know why, but so he had smart water, so I stole one of his because to me, I'm like, this is really like fancy, expensive water. I don't know if it's actually expensive, but in my head, it is. Um, but yeah, I just want to come on here to talk. Um, I will be getting back into this later. I've read the first two acts, which is what I want to get to today. But since I still have literally like two and a half hours of reading time, I need to make sure I turned off my timer earlier because I am feeling like I'm downing. Yeah, I didn't turn it off. So. <laughs> This has gone from four o'clock to 5.54. So that's an hour and 54 minutes. So an hour 54. I just need to write that down somewhere so we can minus it. Um, yeah, I totally messed up for that. Cause Delilah started pulling on my hoodie. And so I had to run in and I usually would have paused my audiobook or not audiobook, um, the timer, but just I was in a rush and totally forgot. So I am in Henry V and, or yeah, Henry V. I think I accidentally said Henry VI earlier, but it's Henry V. Because um, Henry VI was in a book that I read in March. So yeah, I did my video on TikTok as well this week, like filming it on my phone. And so I wasn't filming on both, like my phone and camera at the same time, but that was too confusing. I was like, where do I look? So I just, because it was a haul. So I filmed it on my camera first. And then I was like, okay, I know the descriptions of all these books now. So when I filmed it on my phone, it was a lot easier because I didn't have to like check Goodreads or check um, the actual description of the book. I don't know I'm going to do this for all my videos nowadays, but it is something that 
I would like to do more of because I know TikTok is so popular and I feel like I could do a good uh, a good job on there um, because my views have been pretty stagnant just around 200 which to me that's still insane because that's like 200 more than who watches my YouTube videos um, but I see other people who are doing extremely well so I'm like I think that I have well enough thought out thoughts <laughs> to have more views but again I have no idea how all that how that algorithm works and everything because I'm like how are 200 people viewing this in like two minutes I don't believe it I think it's the dead internet theory which I'm I'm starting to believe more and more lately so I'm going to get back into this this I have to be following along because there's so much info dumping in this one, which is kind of shocking because the other books in this War of the Rosa series, I feel like I didn't have as much info dumping. So I really have to listen while I'm listening, have to look at it on my, I have to look at the book while I'm listening. So, okay, I did bring my drink in here because I, I'm a girl. Of course I have three drinks at once. That's, that was like I saw on Instagram or somewhere. I only have two drinks, a tea and a water. And then I'll get milk tonight because I don't want acid reflux. But I kind of feel like burping. <laughs> so I'm just going to chill for like four minutes and then get into reading. I am 69% into Henry V now. I'm not going to go into my thoughts today since I am so close to finishing. And my review will literally be probably like two or three clips from now and I don't want to just be repetitive with y'all so I'm going to save all my thoughts until I do my review and the vlog tomorrow on Tuesday. I really wanted to finish this today but I just didn't have the time because this audiobook I have had to listen to at a slower pace because I mean literally a play is just dialogue so it goes really quickly it is oh yeah but this audiobook is really cool because it has like all the sound effects like you hear the swords being drawn you hear the soldiers marching and as I said it's multi multicast so you have multiple different people and there's music so the audiobook is very much an immersive experience but I definitely do prefer Henry the fourth to Henry the fifth which as that movie I was talking about earlier is inspired by both of those um, plays. So I definitely do prefer Henry IV, but I've heard a lot of people have Richard III as their favorite in The War of the Roses. So that is, I think there might be one between this one and Richard, well, Henry, we have to have Henry VI and then Richard III. Yeah, they just skip Edward IV. So maybe we don't get Henry VI. There might be somebody else in between. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I know it's not a literally like legit list of everybody who ruled which is interesting that Shakespeare did that but I don't really know yeah I don't know what his motive was uh, but I get it because sometimes there are just more exciting people in history like it's like why do we have t so many tv shows on Henry the eighth versus Henry the seventh Henry the eighth had a pretty scandalous life with all his wives so it's just I guess whatever equals more interesting and at that time period was more interesting might be different than what we would see now as interesting because I mean he didn't do a play on Henry VIII so and now Henry VIII you see everywhere but it is 7 30 so the hockey game is probably starting like right about now but I'm gonna go heat up some dinner I have soup like every other day I just I love soup right now and I love nachos <laughs> completely right I thought about having nachos for dinner but I was like I don't know I don't know if I want something crunchy at the moment because I did have some like uh chips that you, the nacho chips I had those um as a snack so I'm like do I really want to do that twice in one day so I'm just going to um heat up some chicken noodle that's my super preference at the moment I don't know why I'm so obsessed with it but today is cold so it's gonna be really nice to have some nice warm soup we are on intermission now so I am about to start the lost ticket by Freya Sampson I don't remember where I heard about this book. I think I maybe saw it on Goodreads as a new release, but just the premise of this has my hopes high. Like before I even, like before this week, I didn't have any expectations for this, but now like since I read the synopsis again, cause I bought this in like 2022, maybe before that, no, it was 2022. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, that sounds like such a strong plot line and just emotional, like packed emotion. What is that word? 
I don't know, <laughs> but it feels like it's just in a, a gut punch. So hopefully it does all that. But I've been reading so many pink books lately and it's so cute. Hold on, like my flamingo and a pink book. Cute, right? So I am going to start this now and just see how much I can get read in about 15 minutes. And then I will read again during the second intermission. Results are in for the day. That made it sound like I was about to diagnose y'all with being crazy. No, okay. So before we minus the one hour and 54 minutes off, it's five hours and four minutes, 17 seconds, point 16 milliseconds. I don't know what that is. It's so minuscule. So if we minus the an hour, 54 minutes off, I read for three hours and it's 3.5, three hours and 50 minutes, or is it three? Third? So we're going to say I read for three hours and 50 minutes. So we did not get to the seven hours that we wanted to get to but i'm not beating myself over it. it's just seeing if i can do that but here are all the books we read today i haven't updated my bookmark in that one but that's what we did today i had a lot of fun today i i'm in such a reading mood i want to buy books i bought a book on ebay last night i can buy one more one more book this month and i plan to do that a target on Wednesday and I just I love watching people's videos. I've been watching books with Brittany. She's like my favorite <laughs> um, booktuber. I watched uh, I've or I've been watching throughout the day her newest vlog and then I did that TikTok today that I'm just so proud of how it turned out and it's it's getting me a follower and it's getting more likes than I usually get so I am super happy and excited about that. So overall I had a really good day today. The hockey game was chaos that, it, that that sign is true <laughs> so yes today was a good day tomorrow we will be reading these same books i have to edit my video tomorrow and then upload it as well and then i am going to get italian food i think i'm gonna do some lasagna for lunch tomorrow or supper i never realized i never really thought about because i eat four meals a day so i I'm gonna call my like four o'clock meal supper and I don't do my four o'clock meal every single day. It just depends. So um, tomorrow I will be doing it. I'm going to the local Italian restaurant, which is super exciting. It was my favorite restaurant for a while, but now it's seafood's my favorite. That's just something in my teenage years, it was Italian. In my twenties, it's been seafood, but I am going to head to bed now. I've already done my skincare, brushed my teeth, all of that. I do need to get a glass of milk. That's my thing. I did make it through that huge water bottle, but I only have a glass of milk at nighttime beside my bed. And that, that's just my go-to, but I will see y'all. Happy tonight. Tuesday. My eyes are kind of watering. I just did my gum medicine. So it's a very strong <laughs> um, thing, flavor or whatever. I guess it's flavor. It kind of makes my tongue burn a little bit, but it, so it does make my eyes water when I use it in the waterfall. Yeah, waterfall. So I was like, that's a lot of water. But we are seeing how much I need to read today. So I already have read today. I've read for 14 minutes and four seconds and 38 milliseconds. So that was in my short story collection. So in total, let's see here. Okay, that was, so I would like to read for seven hours and 51 minutes, but we have to minus the reading tab because again, I use the Kindle app and I use the Audible app and we don't include that in our um whatever you know so if we do the math to minus one hour and 33 minutes off so let's see here <laughs> math 7.51 minus 1.33 so i would like to read for six hours and 18 minutes today so that's basically double what we did yesterday <laughs> But anything is possible. And again, this is all just for fun. Really random side note. I made these like nachos for my lunch today and the house smells so good. <laughs> I know I'm having Mexican for lunch. I'm gonna have Italian for supper. We love food. But um, yeah, that's all I have to update y'all on. We're gonna be finishing a book later. So that's probably when I will talk to y'all again. Sorry, I was realizing one of my books was jutting out the shelf. Okay. 
So I will see y'all then. It is currently 1.40, so it's a little while before I'm gonna go read at three. So I'm just gonna watch some booktube and I already edited my video. I just need to get around to uploading it on Facebook and YouTube. So I'm going to do that as soon as it exports. I finished Henry V, so I'm giving this a two star. Um, that's not with Call Pal or anything. I don't know really how to rate plays. This is my second play ever that I'm rating. It's just, it wasn't as good as the last one, which was a three star. I definitely do prefer Henry the Fourth to Henry the Fifth. This one, um, okay, well, let's let's try to do Call Pal, um, but I'm not. Like, in my rating, I'm not doing call pal. So for characters, I didn't really have a favor in here. I guess Henry himself had the best lines. Yeah, I didn't have a favorite character. Atmosphere. This was a lot of military being on the battlefield, which is not for me. I definitely prefer, prefer more political intrigue. Um, the writing was great. The writing was the best part. The dialogue, I mean, obviously it's, play, it's like all dialogue, but there was, going back to atmosphere, a lot of info dumping, which I was just like, oh my gosh, get on with it. I know all this already, but obviously I think the majority of people are not going to know a ton about the War of the Roses. That's just one of my hyper fixations. And I'm sorry, this desk or table shakes. Then plot, yeah, as I said, this was a lot more battle heavy and all of that when the others were more court political heavy. So this one just was not for me. And I will be starting a new book at six. This is again on my TBR. I'm reading classics this month. So this is Naomi by Junjichiro Tanazaki. So this is a Japanese classic. I'm not sure what year this book was originally published in. Let's see if it says... Uh, the translation is based on, published in 1985 with serialized issues of Osaka. And so 1924, but I'm not 100% because it was like, okay, when it was published here, when it was published in English, it gets confusing. So I will read y'all the description though. When 28-year-old Joji first lays eyes upon the teenage waitress Naomi, he is instantly smitten by her exotic, almost Western appearance. Determined to transform her and into the perfect wife and whisk her away from the seamy underbelly of post-World War I Tokyo, Joji adopts and ultimately marries Naomi, paying for English and music lessons that promise to mold her into his ideal companion. But as she grows older, Joji discovers that Naomi is far from the naive girl of his fantasies, and in Tanazaki's masterpiece of lurid obsession, passion quickly descends into comically helpless machoism. I know that word, but I've never said it out loud. But I've never read a Japanese classic, and I've never read anything set in Japan in that time period. So I do think that will be super interesting to read about. And I think Naomi, I mean, obviously she's the title character, but how, what kind of impact she's marrying this man and he's trying to change her completely as a person. I think that will be a really interesting character study. So again, I will be starting that at six. It's currently 4.03. I'm gonna go about my reading journal stuff of what I do when I finish a book and then when I start a book. So I'm just gonna be working on my journal right now and then writing my short little review for Henry V. The only is I totally forgot to show you all the bookmark. I brought it in here and everything, but it was this mark as unread from Book of the Month. For today's reading, let's see how many hours I got to. So again, our goal was like that six hours on something. I don't remember the exact number, but I remember it was somewhere in the six hour range. So I got to two hours, seven minutes, 17 seconds, and 0 0.07 milliseconds. So not as much as yesterday and not as much as we wanted to get to today, but I read, I actually read more pages today than I did yesterday. So it's interesting how all of that, how the time can be less, but I read more pages. That just goes to show how writing style can play a huge part in how long it takes you to read and how different kind of formats because the first book I read today, that's a physical one. Second one was audio. Third one physical. Fourth one physical. 
and then the last one was ebook. So yesterday, I don't remember I said how many pages I read, but it was 132 pages, when today was 139 pages. And this is what this week looks like in um, my journal so far. So those get filled in if I get 200 pages read, these down here. And I'm starting, because I've really struggled in the spring um, with getting 200 pages read in a day. So I'm uh, rewarding myself when I do it, buy a little something on eBay. So online thrifting, basically I got a, um, prop to use for an ASMR video in the future. And then I got a little dachshund, um, I guess you would call it a statue cause it's only like that big, but I'm a miniature dachshund lover, so I am going to want to purchase it. But tomorrow, I don't know, I love Wednesdays. I go to Target on Wednesday and I do plan to buy one book because I am allowed to buy 13 books this month. So I am allowed to buy one more book and I plan to do that at Target tomorrow. But that is all for the day. I watched a baseball game today. My team won, go Dodgers, lots of fun. And um, one of my friends went to that game and then, yeah, I'm going to, I've been watching The King on Netflix since I read Henry the Six, so I'm watching the movie adaptation of that, it's a rewatch for me, and that is where I'm going to end Tuesday, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Happy Wednesday. I'm kind of cold. <laughs> I just did my morning routine, even though it's not morning, but... The water of the water flosser goes all down my arms because I am a mess. I should put a towel there or something, but I'm cold. I'm cold. <laughs> but I did get two packages that I want to open on here with y'all. So the first is a DVD coming all the way from Germany. I just had a whole like lecture this morning from my friend from Germany being like, oh, you'll be lucky if it works. But like, I already had a friend who ordered the same thing and it worked on an American DVD player because DVDs, they don't make them. They used to be universal, but apparently now they don't make them universal. So, and then I can't find my DVD player I had that connected to my laptop. I miss in like 2013 or whenever, back when I was in school, when the laptops came with the DVD, like you just slid it in the laptop. Now you had to buy something completely separate to connect to your laptop. And that's just why, like that, I guess they want more money out of you. <laughs> I don't know, but one of my favorite shows, Medici is gonna take it off Netflix and it's a Netflix show. So I'm like, what? <laughs> so I had to buy the DVDs. So this is one of the seasons, there's three seasons. And this one is season three, which this is all in German on here, but you can play it in English. Um, yeah. Um, y'all know how that works. It came from Bavaria. Oh my gosh. It was made in Bavaria. <laughs> That's an inside joke, but we got that. And then I do have book mail because I told y'all earlier in the vlog about one book on eBay and it is coming to us from Fresno, California. And do I have, yeah, I do have scissors right here, even though I think I probably could get into this without scissors, but for the sake of time and don't want to keep y'all here all day, I'm just gonna do it with the scissors. So I went with the one that was just ending the soonest on my watch list on eBay. And it was this book here. It's like how it's very narrow. Oh my gosh, it's under like people. When I ship books out, I literally I wrap it up in one thing of bubble wrap. And that's all. Okay, now this the plastic came in. It. So I hate how people ship things on eBay. <laughs> they make it so hard to get into. So we had that packaging. Now we have this. And I'm like. Oh, guys, just let me get to it. <laughs> I guess the book is not going to take too much damage. Okay. There we go. Nice hardback. 
from Delray. This is The Art of Prophecy, The War Art The War Art Saga, book one by Wesley Chu. This is a fantasy book. And oh my gosh, the map is colorful. I love that. And it still smells brand new. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. So let's see what it's about. In this epic fantasy ode to martial arts and magic by the best-selling author, a prophesized hero must work with a band of unlikely allies to save their kingdom. So I do think this is Jack, uh, no, why am I saying that? Chinese inspired. So Wesley Chu lives in Los Angeles. There's like a cool picture. I feel like he just looks so cool. But that is the fantasy book that I got. Y'all know I've been in a fantasy mood and this is only, this is a duology and we love that. We love a duology. So here's my haul. Medici. This is Di Medici Lorenzo de Prest Pre Prestige. <laughs> and then The Art of Prophecy. I totally forgot like the main reason why we're here to do the time to see how much I have to read today. I need to stop watching baseball and movies on my phone. <laughs> 10 hours and 41 minutes take off at hour 37. So 10.41 minus 1.37. We want to read for nine hours and four minutes today. I have read a short story today that was literally like half a page long and that got me to 39.58 seconds read. <laughs> so I will get back into Naomi at three o'clock. It's currently 1.32. Wednesday's my off day. I don't really do anything on Wednesday. I'm just watching booktube and we love that. I could be reading in that time, but I'm not. I just got home from Target and I did pick up a book. This is my last book I'm getting this month. I got 13 books this month and this is the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This is a kind of like fantasy romance, but like witchy. So a warm and uplifting novel about an isolated witch whose opportunity to embrace a quirky new family and a new love changes the course of her life. This was one of a lot of people's favorite books of 2023 and I love witches and that's the vibe that I've been wanting lately. I just want magical kind of like folklore which witchy that kind of vibe is what I've been wanting to read so I picked that up. I also got this pillow to go in on my outside. It is uh can be used for outside and I got a nice flower pot because I've been repotting a lot of my plants lately. I passed a little, I got a little past the halfway point in Naomi so I wanted to give y'all my thoughts so far. So the character dynamics and yeah character dynamics are great. We're giving that a four star. I am loving seeing why these two people got into this relationship and how that relationship goes from you know the roots up <laughs> and that has been super fascinating dissecting the relationship and all of that but I'm not giving the characters a five star just because I don't feel an emotional connection to these characters whatsoever and then the atmosphere is really cool as well because we are seeing themes of modernization and western westernization of Japan. I didn't know anything about Japan at this time period and especially the westernization part is really fascinating me because what I know of Japan is that they were very much isolation like big on being isolated so I'm curious this is in the 1920s and obviously we have World War II like 10 to 15 years later. So how did all that play out? And then the writing has been good. This is translated and this book is 100 years old. So with classics, I only, I'm only kind of scared going into it because I don't know what I'm getting myself into. But this reads very fast. It's very accessible. So the writing has been good. But at this point now, um, since the second quarter, it has gone a bit more heavy, I guess. Nothing too bad, but it's the pace has slowered. And then plot, 
I think it really, this is more of a character driven book rather than a plot one. Um, the plot will definitely make some people uncomfortable. I think it's supposed to make you uncomfortable because I mean, this is compared to Lolita and we know Lolita is like creeps. And this character, the main character who is narrating this, Joji, yeah, he, he's a creep. And I think it's really interesting how self-aware he is. Like he is aware that this relationship isn't really right. And again, once I do my full review, when I finish the book, um, I will go more into those thoughts, um, go more into detail. Since it is such a short book, that's why I'm not giving too much away right now because all these classics I've read lately have been really short, so I don't want to just be repetitive with my thoughts. But I'm going to go have some dinner. It's Wednesday, so pizza night for me and watch some hockey and have fun. When the book low-key matches my shirt, like, not intentional. <laughs> but I got to basically 30% in the lost ticket. So since I am now over a quarter of the way into it, I want to give y'all my thoughts. The characters I am really enjoying. There are a really wholesome lot of characters here. Some of them on the cover. I don't know who this lady right here is. Oh, sorry, it's kind of boy to the pest driver. This lady right here with the red bag. I don't know who she is. I mean, I only have guesses who these people are. I mean, some, it's pretty obvious, but we're not 100% on anything. <laughs> but I did, to my friend who he's already read this, I was texting him, I was like, okay, this is that person, that's that person, that's that person. But he he's not giving me any answers, but he was like, tell me your theories all while you're reading this because he had so many theories. I don't have that many theories, but I have been telling him my thoughts while I've been reading it. But characters, yes, very wholesome cast of characters. If you like the book Still Life by Sarah Winman, which is a historical fiction, you will like these characters. Completely different vibes because this is more like a contemporary it is listed as a romance, so I'm sure some kind of romance is going to ensue, but definitely more just on the contemporary side right now. But I do think these books just have such similar like cast of characters and vibes, just so wholesome. Uh, Libby, our main female lead, was kind of annoying me today, but I think it's in an intentional way, but we'll just have to see where that goes. Atmosphere very London, very British, and the author's done a great job at writing that. The writing, though, is my only issue with this book. It's so just... Okay, on the... Look how long that paragraph is. That is all one paragraph. I hate lengthy writing. Like, you can do lengthy writing good, like a Ken Follett, a George R. R. Martin, Donna Tartt, um, Pat Conroy all do a great job at having lengthy writing but you have to be able to get your point across not just going all batting around the bush um like I want it to the like Joan Didion spoils me with that <laughs> I just I like blunt writing and as I said some writers can do a great job at making it lengthy but making it worthwhile this is lengthy but not worthwhile it's just like get to the point. So I don't know if maybe the author had a certain word limit she had to get to or something like that. But that I want to skim so bad, but especially with the reading challenge that we're doing right now, I'm like I need to be reading as long as possible so I'm not skimming. And since this is somewhat of a buddy read since my friend read it like a month or two ago, um, yeah, he read it in February. I want to be really into like get everything out of it since I am buddy reading it again in a sense. Plot again this plot is a very wholesome plot of trying to reconnect these people who um got lost to each other over 50 years ago um actually 60 years ago. I just think that it that is such a romantic plot and it's a wholesome plot and just seeing people come together is something that I love because in the world we live in, people can say it's just happening now, but seriously, it's been happening as long as time. People are only being divided, so I love to see people coming together. I think that's fantastic, and I, I could go on a whole spill, but we're not doing a TED Talk on how everything's only been divided and that's just how the world works. 
yeah, I could go on a stroll, but I'm not. But I'm going to get a bath and then I'm going to read Outlander and then update y'all with how long I run today and all that after Outlander. It is a little past 10 o'clock and it's now time for me to fill y'all in with where I got to with my reading today. So I read for two hours and 10 minutes, so more than yesterday, but not as long as Monday. But Monday, I feel like it's typically the day out of like the weekdays that I get the most reading done. Weekends are definitely when I read the most and I know Saturday is going to be a huge reading day for me but today for the official time that is two hours 10 minutes 37 seconds 0.38 milliseconds if you know 0.38 <laughs> but that's how much we read today so I am proud of that because that was more than yesterday and that's always really my goal is to read more than I read the day before that doesn't always happen and I don't beat myself up over it if that doesn't happen but it's just a tiny goal that makes me feel good I'm like I did that so that's my reading update for Wednesday I did not get to watch a lot of the hockey I didn't see the end I only saw the first period so hopefully the hockey game tomorrow is like my family's team of who my family pulls for the hurricanes so that I know um it will work <laughs> Because it will be on the TV and all. We only have one TV at my house, if y'all weren't aware. So that's why I watch a lot on my computer and phone. And if Spectrum's not working, therefore, I can't watch on my computer. So oh, my hair is dripping. <laughs> I used a bath bomb today. I don't think that's going to be included in the vlog. But it will be on TikTok and Facebook. And that was my first time using a bath bomb in two or three months. Something like that. So I smell so good rather than just like soap. I smell like citrus which is nice but i am rambling so i will see y'all tomorrow on hey guys and happy thursday oh my gosh i'm cold same as yesterday but i just turned off my fan so we're seeing how much i have to read so i actually wasn't on my phone as much as usual yesterday i think it's because i haven't been reading i had been i read like three audiobooks in a row or it was an ebook and then two audiobooks so now since I'm back to reading physically, I think my time has gone down. So it's 9 hours and 25 minutes, and then we want to take off an hour um, and 4 minutes. So that will be 8 hours and 21 minutes is what we would like to get to today. And then I have read an essay or short story or whatever today that took me 7 minutes and 15 seconds. So that's where we're at. We're there reading. I'm kind of anxious. I'm waiting on the EPS truck because my dad had me order these like seat covers for dogs um for when your dogs go in the car so it's like safer for them and easier to clean and all of that um and i bought it on amazon usually amazon doesn't make you sign for packages but for some reason they think a seat cover for your car is so valuable you have to sign for it and it said it was going to be here 12 30 to 2 30 and it is 209 right now and you can track the ups truck and he's all the way in sardis i don't y'all aren't gonna know that but I'm like, there's no way he's going to get here in that time frame. So I'm like, what if one of my lunches when he gets here and I'm not going to be here to sign it? And is this going to be so much anxiety? <laughs> not really like anxiety because I'm like, it's not like life or death or whatever. But it's just like kind of stressing me out because I'm like, I bought this for somebody. I wasn't even the one to like it. Like I didn't, you know, it's not for me. This is for somebody else. So that's why I'm more surface. If it was just my thing it would be fine. But since this is somebody else's, I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, um, they need this, blah, blah, blah. So hopefully he gets here before then and all of that. But I am going to do, I have been doing, I dropped it, a tarot reading on myself every day. I'm not doing it in the traditional sense. I just, I draw a card out and I'm like, okay, it's the six of wands or whatever. And that, I'm like, that's going to describe my day. And so far it's been pretty accurate. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I did, I forgot to do it yesterday, but this is the deck that I use. And again, this is just for fun. This is the Forest of Enchantment Tarot by Luna, Luna Ia, um, Weatherstone and illustrated by Mira Ila, um, all wood. So I'm just going to do that. And then, as I said, it's 210. So I don't read for another 50 minutes. So I'm just going to watch some booktube in that time. Let's do an update on my UPS situation. It's six o'clock and I still have not got my package yet. So I didn't read outside at three because I was like, that'd be a hassle to get from the backyard to the front door when he gets here. So I stayed inside and then I was really hungry because Thursday I go to get lunch and I'm like, I'm just gonna go because he went to a neighborhood even further west. So I was like, I'm gonna go and because of how slow he's taking, 
I think I can get home in time. And I did. And I have been finished eating for like 20 minutes now. And then I went and you see dirt. I was repotting some plants and fed the cats and hung out with my dog. So the UPS man, it says he's in my neighborhood at the back, like starting at the back and coming forward. So hopefully we get that package now and all this UPS stuff will be over. <laughs> I just finished, oh my gosh, it's my soap tan really that like bad on my collarbone. I can't tell this is the lighting or yeah, I can't see that far down. But I finished Naomi and we're gonna go over my thoughts and go into my review of the book. So first and foremost, I'm giving this a 3.4, which in app, that's a 3.25. And so it was an average read, it's a good book. And my three words to describe this book are characters, relationships, and readable. This is by Junji Chiro Tanazaki. It is a classic. Um, this version that I read was published in 2001, but the original book was published in, two, oh, not 2000, in 1924. And I read this from April 23rd to the 25th of 2024. So let's go into my thoughts and review. So characters. I loved the dynamics and exploring the relationships in this book, but I didn't feel an emotional connection to these characters. This is a very uncomfortable age gap. Um, the main, our point of view that we're reading is Joji and he is 28 years old and he meets a teenage 15 year old Naomi who is a waitress. And he starts a relationship with her and he himself, he's self-aware with it. He knows that he is going crazy. And um, he even tries to hide the relationship by saying that they're, they're just friends living together and all that, that they don't do anything physical and they don't do anything sexual, but obviously it's creepy. And so I found that really interesting that the author is going this route where this guy knows what he's doing isn't right. And we never get the perspective of Naomi, but we really see how the people around her felt her and let her get into a situation like this. And she was, I think she was really groomed by everyone around her, Joji and then her family, just of what we hear about her family as it's revealed in the story. And I, so I think exploring this relationship of why these people are in this relationship and how the roles in a relationship can turn as time goes on. But I never felt an emotional connection to these characters. But I did love exploring their relationships. Atmosphere, I gave a four. And with the characters, I gave that a four. So atmosphere, I'm giving a four star as well. Um, this is set in the early to mid 1920s in Japan, which I, I don't know anything about that era in Japanese history. We're seeing the modernization of the country. We have, I think a lot of the world was really modernizing at this time. We had Joji who comes from the country from, uh, you know, all his ancestors were farmers, but he's moved to Tokyo and has an office job and all of that. So he is like the first in his family to do that. And then, so we're seeing that modernization and then we have Western, and y'all know I can't say that word, there's too many S's and Z's, but the Western influence that is on Japan because he's attracted to Naomi because he says that she looks Eurasian, that she looks like the actress Mary Pickford, which we have a book. The, um, no, that's, uh, that's not the Pickfords. I thought there was a book on them. That's the Midfords. My bad. But he's, he's attracted to her because he thinks that she looks um, British. And, but we see a lot of the impact, sorry, I'm moving home to the end, it's making the desk shake, but there, Hollywood has such a big impact. This is when movies are first being made and going from the silent film era to talking movies. And we have, um, I don't know why all these Western people are in Japan. We have one character who was a Russian countess, but from, because the Russian revolution just happened, has escaped through Siberia to Japan. So, but everybody, they want to wear the Western fashions. They think the what just the Western is what is so cool. Like they want to design their houses in that way. And they want to dance that way. They want to listen to that music. 
And so it's interesting seeing that influence because I do know that in Japan in World War II is very much about being isolated. So this is set in, as I said, the early to mid 1920s, obviously World War II starts at the end of the 1930s. So I'm curious of what, how we got from point A to point B of all these people being extremely influenced by the West and then ultimately going to war with the West. Sorry, I did drink a little. Um, yeah, my allergies have been acting up. Then we have the writing. I'm also giving the writing a four. It started out really good. It was, it's very accessible. As I told you, I was scared to go into this writing because it's a translated work and a classic. So those, sometimes you get bad translations where it can be very clunky, but no, this was not clunky. It was so accessible and so readable. And it felt like it could be a modern Japanese book. But about the once you get a quarter of the way into the book the writing does start to slow the pacing slows so there's no consist consistency to the pacing and that therefore made it hard for me to follow i just found myself skimming when there were paragraphs that were as long as pages i'm not about that get to the point and then we do have plot plot I gave a three because there's not very much a plot. It's a very quiet book. It's a very character driven book and I never found myself wanting to know what was going to happen and uh, but I, there were the ideas oh, I told you the modernization the western influence and then there's the story with Naomi's character is where we come from is that and how we were raised is that what makes us as a person um, or can you break free of those rules, which I thought was an interesting plot. And then logic, I gave a three because I don't know. And then I really shouldn't include logic in some of these, but then enjoyment, it felt like a three star overall. And that's what I ended up getting on Goodreads. So I would still recommend picking up Naomi, but as I said, do be aware of this being creepy and there are fetishes shown throughout, which kind of shocked me for a book being a hundred years old and talking about some themes, but again, Americans are very prude, prudish um, in the streets and not in the sheets, but we finished that one. My next classic I'll be starting tomorrow and it's going to be a buddy read. It's actually a reread as well. I read this my senior year of high school, senior, junior, senior, or whatever was American literature, but The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And this is the original 1925 edition that I have here. And I got this for literally like $1 on um, Amazon. So this is, I got it in 2022. But I have a hockey game that probably has already started. And I'm very late to making dinner. So good thing I had a late supper today. But I'm going to write my review and then do all that stuff. The only thing I forgot to show my bookmark. It was this little magnetic guy. I think he's from Six of Crows or something like that. I got him in a subscription box. So I finished reading for the day and it was actually my biggest reading day page number wise. I read 171 pages and that equals out to, why did I click the calendar app? I'm trying to go to the clock app. Two hours and, and 21 minutes, 23 seconds and 85 milliseconds. So our second longest timer wise. And again, we had to remember Monday, I did have that glitch of where I forgot to turn off the thing. So that's up in air if that's actually right but it was a successful reading week i finished two books so far this week and then y'all know i binge read on weekends tomorrow and saturday i'm gonna have a ton of time to read so i do think i will finish the lost ticket before weeks in and i think and um whatever i start after that who knows if i will finish that or not it depends how long that is i have no idea what i'm reading after that book so another thing I'm um, thankful for this. So you know I had to wait all day for the UPS man, but we do have a positive out of that when we got the package. But the other thing is since I had to wait, I was reading during that time that I was waiting. So I did get those hours or minutes in to the reading challenge. So there's positives and negatives in everything in life. Yin yang, you know, <laughs> I don't exactly know how yin yang works, so that might not be that works so you know but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you made it all the way through leave any kind of rain emoji in the comments below and as always comment rate and subscribe and don't forget to ring that notification bell to be notified when all my videos go live i'll see you in the next one bye